All right, Charles, let's talk about the Book of Clarence because a few months ago I made a video talking about this movie and I was shocked at the fact that Jay-Z was involved in this film at the producer level. And now this film is finally out. I think it's been out for a few days now. It's not doing all that great in the box office. I think it's made like $3 million, maybe like $4 million in the box office, which isn't that great considering that the budget was... 10 times that at least. So they're definitely in the red right now. But this film really confuses me because the media is marketing this film as a faith-based film. And it seems as if the director of this film, the writer of this film, is also getting on board with that and marketing this film as a faith-based film. And that's really confusing to me because when I think of a faith-based film, I think about number one, the primary focus, the primary focus, the number one focus of the film is to glorify Jesus Christ. That's the primary focus. And then in doing so, it is also edifying to the spirit. It's edifying to the body of Christ. It is meant to build up our faith, not to confuse us, not to plant seeds of confusion. And it's also meant to allow people who may not know Christ an understanding of who he is and the beautiful gift that he gives us of eternal life. That's what I think about when I think about a faith-based movie. Now, I understand that there's different ways that you can go about doing that. But those core tenets have to be in place for me to consider it to be a faith-based movie. That's just me. When I think about this movie, and just from the standpoint of at the producer level, I don't get the vibe that Jay-Z believes that Jesus Christ is God. I don't get the understanding based on what he said. And I don't know what he says. It. I don't know what he does in, in, in private. I don't know what he believes in his heart. But based on the things that I've seen, the lyrics that I've read, the interviews that I've watched, I don't get a clear understanding that he believes that Jesus is God. And if a, if a producer is not clear in their beliefs when it comes to a faith-based movie, it becomes extremely confusing for me to believe the sincerity in those claims. Now, Christianity Today, which... I'm not necessarily sure who runs Christianity uh, today. And and like I said, I haven't seen the movie. Maybe you've seen the movie, maybe it's you feel like it's not blasphemous. Maybe you feel like it's 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 fine. Maybe you feel like it's edifying. Maybe you feel like it is a faith-based movie. But for me, the spirits behind the movie don't seem to line up. And I'm going to show you what I mean. I have a few interviews queued up that I want to uh, watch with y'all to support some of the points that I'm making. And let's just be clear. I want nothing more than to see more faith-based movies come out. I want nothing more to see, you know, creative people talk about the beautiful story of the gospel in their own way. But I just want those individuals to be very clear as to what they actually believe in. Because there's a fine line when it comes to deception. The devil is very good at sprinkling a little bit of truth in a sea of lies. So if we're going to be making faith-based movies, I think the people who are making them need to be very clear when it comes to their belief system, specifically around Jesus Christ. 
Otherwise, let's not call it a faith-based movie because it's just confusing. Now, I want to watch this video. This is from Ruslan. He posted this video. Um, this is on his Bless God channel. So go check out his Bless God channel if y'all haven't seen it already. Um, this is from an interview specifically that the director, I don't, his name is James Samuel. Um, he was on the breakfast club. So he was being interviewed by Charlemagne, the God and, um, you know, that whole crew. Let's watch this video. I know it might get a little weird because my face is on the screen and then Ruslan's face is on the screen and the video is small, but just bear with me. All right, let's get into it. Jay-Z's The Book of Clarence, director and writer, recently goes on The Breakfast Club and gives the deeper theological meaning behind this book, his portrayal of Jesus, his portrayal of Clarence, and ultimately with a deeper agenda and worldview that he is attempting to communicate. The Book of Clarence is a new movie that is executive produced by Jay-Z, and it highlights the time of Jesus's day and uh, someone there that is desiring to have the same gifts or the same powers as Jesus. And so he's trying to acquire these powers. That's, that's all I know from the trailer. It's someone in Jesus's day and time. So Jesus is kind of in it, right? But they don't really show Jesus in the trailer. And so on The Breakfast Club, they get into Jesus in the movie and Charlemagne asks the questions and then watch where this goes. This goes left really quick. Said about Matthew 24, five. five. Yeah. That was the debate me and my wife was having this weekend. And that was the debate we were actually having this, this morning. morning. It's like, who exactly was Jesus in the film? So Matthew 24, 5 says, mm -hmm. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. This is Jesus telling people that there's going to be false Christ. And listen <laughs> to where Charlemagne, Charlemagne, you know better, bro. You know better. This man knows a gang of pastors, knows a gang of Christians. And so where this goes, especially on this verse, for many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Listen to this. Oh, and, and maybe this is just me being- Why your face look like that? He don't look like yeah, he don't want to tell us. We saying, were maybe, arguing this morning yeah, about but it. Yeah. Maybe I'm just being a little fake deep. What I took from it was everybody's God. We should recognize everybody is God. But the most <laughs> important thing is recognizing God in yourself. Recognizing yeah, God in yourself, Charlemagne. Like all of us have that. <laughs> <laughs> the way he said that. He said, recognizing God in yourself, Shalomay. Like he hit it on the head. Like he got it on point. Oh my goodness gracious. So that's the director and writer of the film. Uh, it feels, and I, listen, I don't know where, I haven't watched this video from Ruslan, from Ruslan yet. I just get like a new agey type of vibe. It's given new age. It's given, you know, we are all gods and that, the, you know, Jesus lives inside of all of us and we are all the divine and we don't need a savior because the savior is inside of us. It's given that type of weird new age type of vibe. I could be wrong, but that's just the vibe that I'm getting. Let's continue. Moment, even though Jesus what? is in the film, right? Mm -hmm. And he's clear and, he, and, he, and he's in the film. and. And I may, I, I go through. Kind I don't of, know if it's as clear as you thought it was, because me and him was arguing this morning about well, this. My wife got it. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, yeah. So it was super clear, but, but Charlemagne's wife got it. Here's the thing, and Envy, you know, Envy loves an argument. Envy loves a debate. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so there is a God in yourself, mm -hmm. and that's super important, man. Like when we see each other, it's peace to the God. Mm -hmm. It's peace to the God. Like peace to the God is what Jesus preaches against. Okay, you are not God. Jesus says, you who are evil, describes people as evil in Matthew chapter seven. Peace to the God is the religion of, of the Lord's, uh, what is the gods and the earths? It is the religion that the Wu-Tang Clan believes. It's the really? religion that Jay-Z believes. Mm. So when they would call themselves gods, the, the black man is God. That's oh. what that is. what that is. So so he said that, he slid that in there. You guys, Did you guys catch it? He slid that in there. Five percenters. I definitely did not catch that. I didn't even know what that was. I've never heard of that before. Bro, you blowing my mind. Hold on. <laughs> what the heck? Hold on. Peace to the gods. This is what I'm talking about. Like, be clear. What do y'all believe in? Be clear, please. Hold on. Let me look this up. Peace to the gods. 
Peace to the gods. Peace to the gods. Peace to the gods and the earths. What the heck is this? Peace. I don't know what. I don't listen, y'all. I don't know what we about to get into. I'm just, this is all, I'm doing this on the fly. I don't know what this is. Peace to the gods in earth. A look into the 5% nation. I remember the first time I got introduced to the nation of gods in earth, in earths, better known as the five percenters. I always was into studying ancient African culture, black sciences, and so on. I was, I was quite different from most of my peers. One of my stepfathers, oh, I thought I was like, one of my stepfathers, what do you mean by that? One of my friend's stepfather noticed my, my thirst for knowledge and gave me a big binder full of lessons. From there, my mind was open and I learned to be the God of my own universe. I told y'all it sounded like some new agey, freaky stuff. These lessons helped me to know knowledge of self as well that day math, those who know, know. Oh my gosh. Somebody said that in a comment. So I was watching an interview on TikTok of this same director. And somebody said that in a comment. Those who know, know. And I was like, I definitely don't know. <laughs> you, I don't, like, what are y'all talking about? Anyways, I appreciate, I appreciate my NGE teachings. It's one of the foundations I stand on. The fam over at hiphopwire.com wrote an in-depth article about the nation of gods in earth, NGE, also referred to as a 5% nation and its connection with hip hop culture, which is interesting because I believe that the person who wrote the movie is also a hip hop artist, or he used to be a hip hop artist, the director of the film. Um, this dude who is dressed like Caillou, no disrespect, but he kind of is dressed like Caillou. So this dude is, uh, I believe he used to be a rapper, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if that means anything, but it's a very good read. Here are some, uh, here are some experts. Origins, considered to be an offshoot group of the Nation of Islam, the Nation of Gods, and Earths fashion itself as a separate group. Why isn't it, uh, why is it doing this? Uh, okay, there we go. Separate itself as a as a separate group, forging its own identity using degrees. Is this some like masonry type stuff? Using degrees or lessons fashioned after the NOI supreme wisdom and the 120 degrees are slightly varied versions of scientific facts. The lessons teach that blacks are the original people of the planet Earth and responsible for every facet of civilization. The five percent angle is built on the premise within the lessons that 85 percent of the population lack knowledge of self while 10 percent of the population have this said knowledge and hide it from the larger groups five percent of that population are poor righteous teachers who will liberate the minds of the 85 percent so this is what i was gonna say and this is before i even knew any of this so shout out to ruslan to kind of making that uh known to my attention I was going to say, and I, we're, I'm still going to show you a different interview, but it seemed like the, the, the main focus of why they made this film was largely based on skin color. And it seemed like it was largely based on their feeling that Hollywood is underrepresenting black people when it comes to the Bible. And they wanted to make a film where black people were represented in the Bible the way that they saw fit. And that seemed to be the primary reasoning behind making this film. It wasn't necessarily to glorify Jesus Christ, but to glorify themselves. So this whole piece to the God things that we just read It kind of makes sense now. Still very confusing. 
but it makes a little bit more sense. Let's continue. Okay. Nations of gods and earth. Wow. Okay? The five percenters. And so that's actually what Jay-Z believes. That's what Buster Rhymes believe. He, he hints it at it on the diary of, of a CEO. That is what Wu-Tang Clan believes. They get into it on the thing. Rizzo wrote a book about it. And it's, 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 a, it's a perversion of what we believe in Christianity, that the Holy Spirit enters us, right? And so the mm -hmm. Spirit of God is living in us. That does not mean that we are gods. That mm -hmm. does not mean that you are divine. That even in Eastern Orthodoxy, the concept of deification does not mean that you are becoming divine. That means that you are being glorified in heaven and, and all your sin is going to be gone. That doesn't mean that you are divine and you are God. So he so he's talking about this, the, the other stuff. And then this also overlaps with what? With New Ageism. The universe is God. The universe is you. You are one with the universe. You are God. Eckhart Tolle. I know some of you guys are like mindfulness. Yeah, that's the same nonsense. Just inverted in more of a, a, a Far East view of things. Whereas Christianity, especially in Romans 1, there's a very clear distinction. There's God and there's people. God is perfect. God is omnipresent. God is all-knowing. God is all-powerful. God is all-good. And people are broken, and people are sinful, and people are evil, right? And then people abuse other people. And so he slid that in here, and no one no one caught it. No one pushed back. And it's such a subtle perversion. And then people will go, well, Jesus said, when he referenced that quote in Psalms where he talks about these people being gods, Jesus was talking about a specific title of, of judges, gods, Elohims, lowercase g-o-d's, judges, and he was mocking them. He wasn't saying, yeah, people can be gods. That's not what he was saying, right? So it's, this is such a distortion, but it's everywhere. Because, because here's the deal. If you're a god, then you don't have to submit to the god. Facts. And that's why I'm saying it's not clear. Like it, this is not a movie that's clearly pushing Jesus Christ as the Messiah, as the one to put our faith in. I was getting the vibe that it's like, no, the faith is found within. And I know just as well as you know, I can't save nothing. <laughs> I don't have, the, I'm, I'm, I am tainted goods. I need the blood of Jesus to cleanse me. You know what I'm saying? So, Okay, hold on. I think he continues. Let's let's just continue this. Hold on. Let me get to the part. I want to see what else he's going to say in the interview. Let's go right here. God is inside you. Right? Whatever your belief is, even if you have no faith, God is inside you. That is, this is, this is heresy. Away from this. This is, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whatever you believe in, even if you have no faith, God is inside you. I'm going to show you, there's an interview that we're going to watch after this, where this dude, um, what's his name? James uh, Samuel. He's very defensive. He gets extremely offended at the claims that this movie is blasphemous. And I found that to be extremely interesting, how defensive he actually got in his definition and his explanation as to why it's not blasphemy. But then everything he's saying right here is extremely problematic. Danger. This is dangerous telling people God, even if you don't believe in anything, God is inside of you. This is this is utter insanity, guys. Absolutely. This movie. Mm -hmm. So what you took away from it for me is a beautiful, is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. It's job well done. Because you know it's the first movie of its kind in mm -hmm. 136 years of the moving mm -hmm. image. Right? It's a it's a really beautiful thing. And you know me, Charlemagne. Like I'm always excited about. Mm -hmm. What I do, filmmakers are, are almost like it's politically incorrect to say my movie's all wicked. Like Christopher Nolan, you watch Christopher Nolan interview, you're asleep by the end of it. <laughs> Even his movies are amazing, but but the interviews are. Whereas I'm not that guy. Clarence wow. is an amazing film. We've never seen anything like it. It's easy to critique something when never it's done. Never seen anything like it. But it's very prideful. All of it seems very prideful. I want to play this interview because it also aligns with what we were just talking about. So this is an interview from um, her channel name is Sherry Nicole. And this is a specific section of the interview with the director. So the same dude that you just saw on the breakfast club on the breakfast club. And then also the main actor in the film who plays Clarence. Um, and this is a section uh, titled faith. So we're just going to watch two chapters real quick. There's a section titled Faith, and then right after this ends, there's a section titled The Bible. 
So just take a listen to what they say in these two sections. Preaching over here. Um, I want to stick with faith for a minute um, and, and go to you here, Lakeith, because we, we talk about themes. James, you mentioned, you know, we have faith, we have forgiveness, we have family, we have fortitude. We watch Clarence really and Thomas kind of go through these journeys of faith. Clarence is being the biggest one, the most obvious. Um, for you, how did playing Clarence in particular either challenge your faith or grow you in your faith? You know, it's when you go into a role, it's a lot. There are a lot of leaps of faith that I don't think people quite understand. First of all, you're trusting in the vision of a director and a team that is very large, hundreds yeah. of people on the set, um, on, a, on a you know a, re a relatively big set. There's a lot of different people involved. There's someone whose job is to move the trash. There's someone whose job is to control the lights. There's someone whose job is to do hair, to do makeup. Yeah. And, and as an actor, you're sitting in all of these different chairs and trusting people with their artistic ability and integrity to help bring the story to life. Yeah. You have to have humility in that, and you have to learn how to trust fall, which is why it's so important to be able to choose your team. Mm. When James confront, when he when he approaches me and he says, peace to the gods, peace to the young black gods, I understand that language. That's how I feel about myself. So yeah. it makes Do you see what he just said? He said, when James approaches me and says, peace to the gods, peace to the young black gods, I understand exactly what he's saying. If you know, you know. That's that 5% talk. <laughs> I didn't even know this video was going to go in this direction. I had a totally different viewpoint until Ruslan said what he said about the whole peace to the gods 5% thing. Hold on, let me run that back. Do y'all see? It's it's so subtle that you wouldn't know unless you knew. <laughs> There's a lot of different people involved. There's someone whose job is to move the trash. There's someone whose job is to control the lights. There's someone whose job is to do hair, to do makeup. Yeah. And, and as an actor, you're sitting in all of these different chairs and trusting people with their artistic ability and integrity to help bring the story to life. Yeah. You have to have humility in that, and you have to learn how to trust fall, which is why it's so important to be able to choose your team. Mm. When James confront when he, when he approaches me and he says, peace to the gods, peace to the young black gods, I understand that language. That's how I feel about myself. So mm. it makes sense. That he communicates in that way with that kind of vision, I felt like I I had the necessary uh, uh, accompaniment to fall into it and know that we were going to be moving in a path of something that we can create that we can be proud of yeah. and move forward, and that our people can be proud of. And in order to get a message across, we have to do two things: we have to make people laugh, and we have to make people think. And that's what we've done. Yes. And that's why when the teaser came out, people might have seen that and thought, oh, maybe this is blasphemous. Trailer 2 is out now. Now you have more context. Mm -hmm. In this age of immediate gratification, often people aren't waiting for that context. But once you see it, you realize this is the furthest thing from blasphemous. In fact, it's right in line with the Gospels and right in line with the truth that we all universally understand. Yeah. You know, one man can get to a point of completion, but he has to go through the hard parts first. Sometimes the hard part is challenging preconceived notions. Hopefully that metaphor serves as a larger metaphor to the story. Mm -hmm. If you can get beyond the blockades placed in front of yourself by yourself, there's beautiful things to be yielded from that. Yeah. And Clarence, Clarence was the vehicle to be able to show that. So in order for me to play him, I had to also have faith. I had to also develop this. I may not be able to necessarily see the light at the end of the tunnel right now. I'm in the thick of the work, but if I trust and I move forward, I can be surprised. This is the first movie I watched of mine. I'm very critical. The first one I watched of mine where I was like, I I love this. <laughs> like I'm, I'm usually like, there's wow. something that I find that I'm like, I, there's something to pick at. There was nothing. Mm. I loved it. There's action. There's romance. There's yes. brotherhood. You know, there's there's black love at the center yeah. of this. There's a relationship with God. There's a relationship with with a young younger black man that we see take place in this very tragic scene, but beautiful scene where the support is coming from the youth who love us. You yeah. know, we need this kind of imagery with all of the stuff that's going on in the world. You know, you got you know violence happening and in, in, in certain parts. We need to know that we can come together and we can exist as one. Yeah. That is who we are. And this film highlights that. And I'm, I'm passionate about that. And I'm really glad to be able to talk about that. Yeah. Because there's a lot of things you could be talking about in Hollywood. We're talking about pushing us forward. Absolutely. And then by virtue of that, we push everyone forward. You know, now that we have this representation, other people could feel like they could represent their specific, like, as we always. So that's what I was talking about. He said there's a lot of things that you could talk about in Hollywood, but we're talking about pushing us forward. 
meaning pushing black people forward and being better represented in Hollywood, specifically in biblical stories. It doesn't seem that Christ is the center of this movie. And that's okay. Christ doesn't have to be the center of every movie because you have free will to make whatever movie you want to make. But when you push back on people for calling it blasphemous, when it is clearly not a Christian film, we clearly do not have the same beliefs, but you're acting like we do have the same beliefs. That's where I have a problem. Because you're sowing seeds of confusion and you're gaslighting so many people as if this is not a completely different faith that you're talking about. You're not talking about faith in Jesus. You're talking about something completely different. And you're using the Bible, you're using the scriptures, you're using Jesus as simply a quote unquote fairy tale that you can manipulate in order to make a film. That's the vibes that I'm getting from it. Like I said, I haven't seen the movie. Maybe I'll go see it. I don't really know if I want to, though. But let's continue. We open up the gates to possibility. Yeah. That's what we're doing. Um, like when you listen to him, him speak, you understand why... I, I always say, if Lakeith turned down this movie, I wouldn't have made it. Mm. He's literally the only person on the planet that could play Clarence. Literally. So was there an audition at all? It was just no. like, hey, Lakeith, no. you're my I guy, met him, let's go. I met, him for, I met Lakeith, we had met a few years ago, but just mm -hmm. in passing, over some pizza. Mm. But, go figure. But I'm actually allergic to dairy, isn't it? I still eat pizza. <laughs> and, it, and I don't necessarily pay for it as much as everyone else. <laughs> like, oh, it's going down. But, <laughs> but, but we we met for The Heart of Day 4 and we were speaking about the character of Cherokee Bill and Lakeith um, got a phone call from his, his cousin and he had to like, he said, I'll call you back in 15 minutes because something could have just happened in a hood and, da -da 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 -da. Yeah. and I relate to exactly what he was speaking about. When you get that call, no matter what you're doing, Everything let me stops. just take care of yeah. this right quick. And when he explained in 30 seconds, you, you must have gone through like 15 possibilities, right? 15 nefarious outcomes from mm. this call. You know, I'll call you back in 15 minutes. Click. I found Clarence. Because I've written Clarence in 2017. I had the idea from like 2004, 2005. I called my sister, Tanya, Tanya, I've got Clarence. She's like, you got Clarence? I've got Clarence, because when I wrote Clarence, I was like, how am I going to cast this role? How am I, they're identical twins. How am I going to cast it? Clarence runs through every single gamut of the human yes. condition. Just as we go through in these um, uh, environments, it's, he's impossible to cast. Someone who's quirky, who's strange, but is also a G in the hood, someone who is like, just has all of these um, uh, personality traits that I am acutely familiar with. You know those people in the hood, but they're not actors. Mm -hmm. How am I gonna find this guy? And Lakeith embodied every single one of them. So from the minute he got to set, I was like, look, after every take, there's something else I'm gonna hit you with later. When we wrapped, I don't go too far. I have something else. Mm -hmm. don't, we're not gonna speak about it now, but. Have something else. Literally, as soon as we finished with the harder they fall, I was like, "Okay, it's time." <laughs> Daily <This> beloved, is... <laughs> we have gathered here today to get through this thing called life, electric world life, and it means forever. But I'm here to tell you, there's something else. The and suspense he... was killing me. And when mm. he sent me the script, it was beautiful because there was just this little picture on the front page of a black man yeah. uh, on the cross. And I was like, oh, right, right, here right, we right. go. <laughs> I know this is about to be amazing. <laughs> and I had no idea just how amazing it would be. And then, you know, it actually it brought tears to my eyes. I don't even know if I ever told him this. I might have mentioned it. But after I read it, I was just crying for a minute mm -hmm. because... It was beautiful. I didn't think that in my lifetime I would read something like this mm -hmm. that had seemed to be so deep-seated in me already that someone else saw that 
and was able to speak to it and able to actualize it. It's one thing to think about making films like this. It's another thing to make them. Yeah. And I was like, wow, we're here. We have arrived. It's time. Let's go. Yeah, you know? yeah. beautiful. I, I love the excitement around, like you mentioning, Lakeith, you, you see a black man on the cross and you're like, all right, we're going to, this is next level. Yeah. There are people that will see that image and think the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a Christian. I wasn't offended by the movie at all. I'm also a creative. I thought it was exceptionally done. But I, I want you guys to get an opportunity to speak to people of the faith-based community who may have an issue with this. Before I ask you know you to do that, I will say um, to you both, especially you, James, there's satire through the film that mm -hmm. I really thought was great. Yeah. But I also I was also able to see your acknowledgement of the sanctity of Christ's story. Oh, absolutely. I don't feel like you overstepped in that way. Actually, I thought you paid homage and great respect to, to the story of Christ. So for you, in hearing what I'm saying and knowing that there are people in the faith-based community who may say, I'm dead, I'm not seeing this, this is blasphemous. What say you both to them? I would, I would say that the Bible only exists, just like the Quran, just like the Torah, is because human beings are sinners. Otherwise we wouldn't, Moses wouldn't have ever had to speak <clears throat> to the burning bush. We are <clears throat> sinners, right? Mankind is the story of sinners. The first two, according to the Bible, Adam and Eve, God said, don't leave the, don't eat the apple. I'm going to the store right quick. I'll be back in a second. Don't eat that apple. And the serpent comes down, Eve and Adam, he came back. The apple was all bit. And that, like human beings have committed sin as like from the minute we made, uh, human beings were created. I would say this, Matthew 24, five, Jesus says, many will come and saying they are the Christ and they would lead many astray. Jesus said that himself. It only takes a Google search to see that in Jesus' 33 years of life, there was two to 300 people in his lifetime saying they are the Messiah. The Bible speaks of Simon the Sorcerer. Like, does anyone actually read the book they profess mm. to know so much about? I, I really need to know. Ask your listeners, what currency did they use in the Bible days? What currency did they use? You see people with, with a dumbfounded, Face. Jesus himself spoke about this. Clarence is a, the book of Clarence is the story of an everyman, mm -hmm. a man that was a disbeliever who goes on a journey of self discovery and redemption and finds faith. He finds faith. For a person to say this film is blasphemy, they haven't watched the film. And if you watch the film and say this film is blasphemy, I have to ask you, I have to ask you why? Is it because the people in the film are depicted of color? I, I need to know why. Ben-Hur would be, no one in the Bible looked like Charlton Heston, right? No one, correct. Even descriptions in the Bible look like the people, you know, that we see every day. They didn't look like Kirk Douglas or, or Victor Mature or Max Von. Sit out, like so. That's my um. That's my um. Uh, uh, you know, uh, thing. Like the movie isn't blasphemous at all. I was brought up in a a really um strong a household, really strong belief. Mm -hmm. Jesus pictures everywhere, and Jesus was the first superhero, right? There's a scene in the trailer where you see Jesus stop the stone every, stones, and goes, Jesus Nazareth. Th someone said to me, Oh, whoa. This looks like the Matrix. I don't look like the Matrix. The Matrix is the story of Neo. Neo is a ripoff of the story of Jesus. Absolutely. I just yeah. took it back. Give Jesus his give, give Jesus his, his props. And look, man, because I'm not getting those those um, biblical epics, because I'm not being served them, because I'm not I'm not uh uh, uh and I'll I'll say this with my with my hand on my heart, because I'm not being delivered the the films that I want to see, and Jesus depicted in the right way. I had to do it myself. So I would say, you're welcome. Mm. Mm. There's a whole lot of pride in that statement right there. Because I don't see Jesus being depicted in the right way, I'm going to do it, and you're welcome. And the film is not blasphemous, not one bit. I'm not convinced we believe in the same God. So it might not be blasphemous to you because we don't believe in the same God. You know what I'm saying? This is an interview um, 
with Jay-Z. So remember, Jay-Z is the producer in this film. So this is an interview with Jay-Z and the same uh, director, writer, uh, James Samuel. Let me get that soundtrack. On the 12th. Let me say something, man. That soundtrack. Thank you. Why are you clapping? You don't even know what's on the soundtrack yet. Yeah, let me take something. That soundtrack. They saw the movie, man. That, yeah, 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 true, that true, soundtrack. True. Give, go give the audience hard. credit, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> that soundtrack go hard. There's a there's a nine minute song with Jay Z and another special guest. Yeah, that. Ooh. I mean, they've been sitting through here. Give it to him, man. Why are you holding it? Why are you holding it? Hey! Why are you don't Exclusive, hold it? Don't, get your phones don't, out. Don't like, deprive the people. It's don't. so it's so deep. You got D'Angelo and Jay Z on the same track. <laughs> like. Nine minutes, 33 seconds of absolute soulful, biblical bliss. My like soundtrack's dropping soon. It's hard. Were you in the end? You in the end of the whole? He said he got a nine minute and 30 second song for the soundtrack with Jay Z and D'Angelo. That is absolute biblical bliss. <laughs> I'm struggling to believe that is true. Oh, man. Okay. They're off to a good start. Words on the joint? I mean, got you back in the booth. You deserve this. <laughs> you deserve it. It's like you're welcome. You're welcome. You're to start telling stories that look like and resemble your experiences and your, your environment. You're saying it had never been done 135 years of 135 cinema. years of move, moving image. Hollywood has never given us a, a, a film like this where you can find us reflected in those days, ever, in 135 years of moving image, not from Hollywood. We were living with this story as we were doing Harder Day, uh, Harder Day Fall. Yeah. Like we're living with the next um, project that we're working on currently. Go real hard. Yeah, yeah, and it's just like, it's like Monday we're talking Harder Day Fall, Tuesday we're talking Book of Clarence, and then we're talking the next film, and et cetera, et cetera. So it didn't, it didn't feel like um, one stopped and another one began. Mm. It felt like one continuous, like it feels now, it feels like one continuous conversation. People yeah. ask me what it's like to work with James, and it's just like, no, it's my brother, and we just talk, and we just, create and we laugh and we eat at my house yeah <laughs> for us these are not tough uh subjects it's like no accurate subject let's paint the picture in the correct way everyone was there it's just yeah. like we we were excluded like you'll see a western and you'll see you know um you know asian people just just like in either in the back you know doing the laundry or they own like the the opium house it's like it's crazy it's yeah. crazy like yeah. that's that's not the existence of, that's not, it's, it's just not accurate. Yeah. So for us to go back and like paint this picture correctly, um, I just was really speaking to that. It's not, we don't tackle tough s subjects. Mm -hmm. We just say, we love this story. This is a great story to tell. And let's tell a complete yeah. full picture. We say that every one of us has a walking on water moment. Uh, it could be um, something to do with your career, your personal life, something you thought would never happen or something you thought you would never get out. If you come from the hood, you definitely had a walking on water moment you've been in a scenario where you should not make it out of that, of that scenario yeah. and somehow you you do or where something just magical happens to you it's unexplainable and life in and of itself mm -hmm. is actually <coughs> unexplainable everyone has that that moment but you can speak to that Jay yeah I think it's the moment where you know as we see Clarence journey he goes through a, 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 a in a space where because of how he's grown up all he believes in is what he sees in the present that's why he says you know knowledge is stronger than belief you know, I love the way that turns that turn of phrase happens in the film because for him, everything is in the physical. It's like everything now. You know, he's in control of everything. He got he goes in the street. He loses the races. He sells his Langham weed. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like so, everything for him is tangible. He can't see past and beyond that. And his mom is sick, and you know, then he gets to this point where he has to believe in something bigger than himself. He doesn't understand or know you know what it is, right? But yeah. he has to he has to believe, and he has this walk on water moment, and like. Um, and like we saying, everyone has that. You know, I've had many of them. Where it's like, or even like coincidences that you like sit around, you're like, damn, I was just talking about that today and this happened and this person knew that person and you know, now this is where I am. I'm sure you've had that in your career mm -hmm. where it's like, you know, one more day and I wouldn't have been here. Mm -hmm. You know, yesterday that would have happened. You know, I had that, you know, dead presidents, three shots close range, never touch me, divine intervention. Yeah. You know, I, if someone, I mean, this is a little harsh, but I don't, you know, this is my experience. If someone is this close to you and they're shooting at you and nothing touch you, you have to believe in something else, right? It yeah. has to be something it's like, what just happened here? Yeah. So in that moment, it's a metaphor for Clarence, you know, his his moment where it's like, oh, he, ha he has to believe in something else, and then the story turns. Yeah. I mean, Lakeith Stanfield, man, is... Yeah. Yeah. I, like I said, I, I, I'm not...
I can't get behind the spirits of this movie. It doesn't seem like it's the spirit of God behind this movie. And the media wants to call it a faith-based movie, but just like when people get, you know, an award at an, at an award show and they want to say, they say, you know, I want to thank God for, you know, giving me this opportunity. What God are you talking about? It's the same thing. Like, what are we talking about? Is Jesus Christ the only way to eternal life? Yes or no? Let's get that clear. Let's get that established. Because it doesn't seem like, based on what I'm listening to, it doesn't seem like we serve the same God. So if anything, this film is more dangerous because they're telling you it's not blasphemous. They're telling you everything's okay. All while their beliefs do not align with your beliefs, with our beliefs. They're completely different. But it's so subtle, just like Ruslan was saying, it's such a subtle deception. That's why it's so dangerous. Because that opens the door for so much confusion. I really don't know if I'm going to go see it or not. I might. If I let you know. If I go see it, I'll let y'all know. And I'll, and I'll let y'all know my final verdict of it. And that might have to be the next step. I might just have to go watch it and then I'll give y'all my, you know, my final verdict. But from what I'm hearing, it sounds very, very deceptive. What do y'all think? Have y'all seen this film? Let me know what y'all think. Are you going to see the, are you going to go see this film? Um, get in my comments, like this video if you want to support the channel. I'm out, y'all.